Hi, my name is Robin from Debray Digital Works, and I'm going to be demonstrating our particle effect engine from the Flash to XNA framework we've been working on. Okay, particles in video games are basically a whole bunch of bitmaps rendered over and over again to give illusions of things like smoke and fire and electrical effects. And uh, we're actually doing our particles obviously in Flash. Um, these are just, um, you know, simple particles, and they're they're vector files, as you can see. Uh, the doesn't have to be a lot of thought put into how the particles look. We're doing four of them here. They automatically, if you specify four particles, it'll actually automatically segment these particles into um, into f four textures. Uh, but uh, you can specify five or eight or whatever, and you can have them go horizontally or whatever you like. This is just um, convenient. Okay, next up, we're going to have a look at the code. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio, and as you can see, um, we're in the, the level 3 screen class, which is the actual game screen. Um, and these particles are automatically brought in through the content pipeline. You can just change them, compile your Flash, and they'll automatically come into Visual Studio. And you can see here, we're going to use particle 0. If you look at the Flash file, that's actually this one with the star and the rectangle and triangle and so forth. Okay, and this is our delay between creating a new particle. Normally, there'll be hundreds or thousands of these. We're just going to create um, somewhere between 1 and 20 particles uh, on each pass and uh, um, we're just going to create one particle every second, or one particle effect every second so you can sort of see what's going on. Okay, if we run this um, we're gonna we're gonna get into the game. This is just a kind of a temporary game framework we're, we're using for testing. We're actually making a game out of this but it's become somewhat of a test file recently. Okay, when I press the Y key on the controller that starts dropping particles and as you can see they're fairly large but you can sort of see the the yellow um, triangle or whatever it is and actually I'm not 100% sure what's what but you can sort of see the different shapes here. Um, and uh, um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually add a breakpoint in uh, C sharp here, and we're going to change the particle we're using. Let's change it to particle 2, okay? And this is an awesome thing about Visual Studio. You can just stop, change code, run it again, and it'll run. Just have a look at particle 2. That's this one with the squigglies and the um, colorful stuff. So let's run that again. We'll come back into our game, and now you can see that the particle is kind of those squigglies, and they're rotating and vibrating just like they did in the other particle effect. But, um, and they're a little bit larger, obviously, because they were a little bit longer. So let's change that, too. Let's go back into Visual Studio here, and we'll set a breakpoint on our actual star particle here. And we'll look for where it's setting the size. I believe that's right here. So we'll stop there, and we'll say, instead of, this is just an easing equation. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, instead of going eight, you know, 0 to 8 times bigger, let's just go 0 to 3 times bigger. If we hit F5 here, we're back. And now you can see it's still vibrating, and it's still the same textures, but they're much smaller than they were. Okay, let's make one more change here. We'll go back in, set a breakpoint uh, here, and instead of creating a particle every thousand milliseconds, let's create one every 15 milliseconds. So there'll be a whole bunch of particles made, and it'll leave more of a trail. Okay, here we are. We got the guy glowing, and as you can see, there's actually quite a trail here uh, when when the guy runs by things and runs into things. All right, so um, that's basically how particle effects work. Um, I'm still really sucked at this game, but uh, next we'll look, take a little bit of a closer look at the code in the game. Okay, here we are back in the game code, and uh, we're in the particle effect class, and um, one thing about, there, there's a few unusual things about this particle effect engine. One, that the assets come from Flash, but another one is that um, we don't, normally the lowest level thing you'll have in a particle effect engine is a particle and it stores things like the the direction the rotation the you know vector 2 for the the direction actually and then the speed the acceleration the movement and all that kind of stuff and that's updated at every pass to to change slightly or move and that's how the animation happens and normally the way you create that is you say okay you know I'm gonna make a thousand particles so I loop from 0 to 1000 and I'm gonna give each particle a random rotation uh, you know, in in radians, so it's going to be you know, give me a random number between zero and one, multiply that by two pi, and that's the direction you're you're moving. You know, give me a random number between zero and one, multiply it by the 
the distance out from the center I want these particles and you know the maximum distance and that's going to be your distance and you kind of do that over and over the alpha give me a random alpha number between 0 and 50 percent or something and it's always give me a random number and do something with it so instead of storing all that in a class which you know when you start getting hundreds of thousands of particles or 100 or 200,000 I guess hundreds, hundreds of thousands would be a little much but um, that starts to really add up there's a lot of floats and vector 2's stored there and then there's a lot of them so um, what I tried to do on this one was to not actually have any particles but instead store a random seed and this seed is actually um, if you look at if you've looked at random number generators before if you start with the same seed you'll always get the same random number so if I start of a seed of at a seed of uh, say 10,000 the fifth random number will always be the same so I reset the seed to a thousand the fifth one's the same reset it again fifth one's the same so get next get next get next fifth one's the same so that's the idea on this random numbers are super fast to generate and they're actually even faster if you use uh, this random uh, it's called fast random by uh, Colin Green and it's basically a dot net version of a really fast random number algorithm and the other much faster than math dot random and the other important thing about this is this um, it allows you to reset the random seed uh, without penalty. Basically with math random it's a fairly slow process. You gotta basically delete and recreate it whereas here you can just reset the number and it'll go back and generate real clean random numbers again. So highly recommended take a look at this library even using it in your own game code for something completely different. It is massively faster than math random and uh, you have full control over the source if you want to do things like uh, I'm saving the state so if I have a seed of you know 10,000 and I generate 500 random numbers maybe next time I want to start from 500 and generate the next ones or first one's 0 to 1000 second one's 500 to 1000 I can save the state super easily in this because I have the source code so basically that's how that works so these random numbers are generated in the base class uh, of uh, particle effect and they get stored in the last four random number gen numbers generated are always stored in here it ends up I only use one two or sometimes three in effects but you know if you wanted to add more obviously you could just rotate in more of them and then these are the actual things we care about and again this is per particle effect not per particle so this this is the position of the swarm of a thousand or ten thousand or hundred thousand particles and this is the rotation of the swarm of a hundred thousand particles so it's important to kinda remember that this is not a single particle but actually a particle effect okay next we're gonna look at the rendering classes of this